Welcome back, everybody, to the 2018 Costa Mesa Pokemon Video Game Regional Championships. We are ready to close out the entire, well, first day of Swiss here. Currently jumping into round eight of Swiss. My name is Dewey Ha. Joining me at the desk, of course, my good friend, Len Duel. Len, you've already seen so many great matches. I've just been kind of relaxing on the side a little bit. Uh, you know, just enjoying taking in the matches and, well. Yeah, that last one was, was incredible. Lots of... Uh, the mirror, well... Pretty much a mirror. Pretty much a mirror. Lots of positioning. Lots of really important turns. Uh, lots of fun to watch. Anyways, now coming up into round eight, we're going to have a matchup between Mark Elson versus Michael Groshans. Uh, Mark Elson, I believe he is actually from Texas, uh, has only attended a couple of local events. Hasn't really been uh, on the regional stage that much. But he's 6-1 and one today. He's 6-1 and one today. Finished 33rd at the Memphis Regional Championships. Uh, Mike Groshans, of course, is a player from Northern California. Uh, he attends a lot of the local events that I actually attend, so I've seen him play uh, many times. And now, well, he's 6-1. and one. This is going to be a win in in-game. You know, if you're 7-1 and one by the end of the day, you're actually guaranteed top cut. So, you know, you always want to try to seal the deal here without having to rely on your opponent's tiebreakers. Yeah, whoever wins here, we'll see back on stream tomorrow in the top eight. Yeah, and that's going to be an exciting top eight tomorrow. But, you know, there's still one more round of Pokemon to play. Uh, you know, it's been just a full day of excitement. I'm just going to get into it. Uh, team preview, Kangaskhan, Landers Therian, Tapu Fini, Aegislash, Heatran, and Porygon2 is the team that Mark Elson will be running over on Michael Groshan's side. He's going to be running the Vion, Tapu Bulu, Caracosta, Camerupt, Mimikyu, and Porygon2. Yeah, you know, Mark's got a team that maybe a few Pokemon that aren't as common today, but have been Pokemon common in like the 2015 format. Other formats very similar to this, like Ega Slash, Heatran, and Kangaskhan. Mike this is all over the place. We got Vivion, Caracosta, Camerupt. Should be a great match. No, I mean, uh, we saw Vivion earlier on in the tournament. Did you uh, expect to see Gary two Chan. Vivions on stream I, today? I did not, actually. Oh. Oh. Um, you know, it's kind of cool. It's kind of an interesting tech for the really popular Mega Charizard Y. With that powder attack, you know, trying to prevent Charizard from being able to go for fire type attacks, a move that not a lot of players actually remember exists. You know, so it's one of those moves that just exists, you kind of blow it off, but then maybe it has some sort of niche use, and people are just trying to find the best way to use it. Yeah. And, and of course, uh, to great effect so far, apparently, at 6 and 1. Yeah. Caracosta is also a Pokemon that uh, was popular back in 2011, part of a famous duo of Turtle Maw. Uh, Led by, well, Nugget Bridge legend Evan Plaid. Lat. Yeah, Pokemon normally known for its Shell Smash. Uh, drops its defense, raises its speed, and both of its attack stats. We'll have to see what it's, if that's what it's going for today. Often combined with that has weakness policy to get even more stat boosts and then rely on its sturdy to make sure it survives doing all that. Yep, that built-in focus sash. So, wow. All right, this is going to be an interesting team. It's 6-1. and one. Mike Groshan's going to try to pilot this team to the top cut. You know, I think this might mean that Caracosta and Vivion are guaranteed championship points. Uh, that's an interesting statistic right there. <laughs> yeah. We see the Mega Kangaskhan. I think it's the first one we've seen today. Uh, it's a Pokemon that's dropped off a lot. Yeah, it used to be easily the most common Mega. Now, with that nerf to Parental Bond, that nerf to Sucker Punch, all these Intimidates, that removal power-up punch, just don't see it as often. And then on the other side, we see that Mega Camera Up, kind of the, the Mega of choice for very offensive Trick Room. It's either that or Mawile, but Camera Up gives you that spread eruption that can do so much damage to both slots. And really, if you're trying to play a team that sets up Trick Room and wins in five turns, Camera Up is the Mega to do that with. And it's going to be threatening a lot. But Heatran, great option to take with the, uh, those eruptions with Flash Fire. Has to worry about Earth Power, though. Looks like both players now are ready to jump right into Team Preview here. As we've already mentioned the teams, it's going to be... Well, I'm, I just don't know how these two teams match up because these are not like, you know, the typical Metagross, Tyranitar teams that we're so used to seeing that we actually just saw in the previous rounds. Well, I think you have to look at Mike's team as a hard trick room team. He's got those two setters, both in Mimikyu and Porygon, and then Abusers and Camerupt, and uh, maybe that type of Bulu, something that can sometimes play in trick room if it's trained to do so. Uh, Maybe Caracosta if it's not a sh Shell Smash variant, not a Pokemon that has naturally high speed. So th then if you're looking at Mark's team through the lens of how does it match up against Trick Room, you know, it has that Porygon 2 to reverse the Trick Room, a really bulky Pokemon that can even take something like that Eruption and still reverse the Trick Room. Um, and then, you know, generally just bulky Pokemon that don't mind 
losing the speed control that much. Kangaskhan can still fake out, still take an attack, still get your damage off. Aegislash, something that maybe has wide guard to also help with something like that eruption. It can also, is willing to take an attack and maybe even be faster than something Mike would, would generally use in Trick Room, but Aegislash is so slow it's faster. Uh, and then Tapu Fini and Heatran, just more bulky Pokemon that won't mind the loss of speed control. And now it looks like both players have made their selections and they're ready to get underway here. Game one of the last round of Swiss here at the Costa Mesa Regional Championships. Winner guarantees a spot in the top cut where tomorrow they will face off for the grand prize of a lot of money and a lot of championship points. Mike now sending out his leads of Mimikyu and Porygon too, so a very hard Trick Room setup right there. Both these Pokemon can set up Trick Room as Mark decides to leave with Kangaskhan and Heatran right here. So a little bit of fake out support here with that Kangaskhan can make that Porygon 2 flinch, but Mimikyu cannot as Porygon 2 downloads an attack boost. Yeah, but it could be that scrappy fake out that would both flinch the Mimikyu and break the disguise. Uh, but you can't fake out both. So one of them can trick room. If you guess, if it, they could either both go for it, expect the fake out, or if you guess wrong and when you don't fake out, the trick room's going to come up here. But these Pokemon don't really threaten that much damage. I mean, Mimikyu could have its Z move or some other Z move, could be threatening Will O Wisp versus that Kangaskhan, but Heatran's got to feel comfortable on the field here. Kangaskhan mega evolves. Uh, of course, you know, Porygon 2 also got a regular attack boost, not going to be as threatening with a special attack boost unless it carries out return, which was an interesting tech over in 2017. Kangaskhan using fake out here, gonna hit into that Porygon 2 parental bond, did get nerfed as Mimikyu now just goes straight for a Will-O-Wisp. Gonna set a burn on that Kangaskhan to reduce that physical damage output by half. As Heatran goes for a roar, gonna go ahead and roar out that Mimikyu just in case it did go for a, a potential trick room right there. So a very interesting tech there as well as Camera up hits the field. And of course, Camera up out on the field without trick room is just not as scary. Yeah, that's how you stop trick room. You fake out one and you roar the other. Roar, um, tech move, it's almost exclusively for stopping Trick Room, can also be used to clear out boosts. If a Pokemon has boosts, you just roar it out, those boosts are gone. Uh, used to great effect there, Met Mimikyu must have been Trick Rooming if that roar went first, because roar does have negative priority to match Trick Room's negative priority. It's just that Heatran manages to go first and roar out Mimikyu first. Uh, and so Camera Up does hit the field. Porygon 2 is going to be able to set up Trick Room now, though, because that Kangaskhan is burned from that Will-O-Wisp from Mimikyu. Yeah, and, you know, Camera Up will be able to survive a possibly Earth power from that heat ran and threatened it back with a very powerful sheer force boosted uh, Earth power from camera as well. Top of gonna hit the field here, gonna take the place of that Kangaskhan, gonna go ahead and activate that Misty Surge, bring out that Misty Train to prevent any sort of status. Uh, really would have preferred that last turn to prevent that Kangaskhan from getting burned, but then again, that would have been the cost of getting a trick set up. Camera is gonna go ahead and Mega Evolve here, gonna go ahead and get that sheer force ability that makes it so powerful, as it looks like it's gonna be a Z move right here. It is an Inferno Overdrive from that Heat Ran, gonna come out and, you know, really set flame to the entire field. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of damage onto, I got to expect it's the Porygon 2, unless it's just predicting a switch in the camera up slot, so I don't think it'll be able to KO the Porygon 2 Pokemon. It's so bulky, but it should pick up really nice damage here. Yep, and you know, Porygon did take a lot of chip damage from that Kangaskhan, actually. Uh, Porygon 2 does hang on, and the Earth Power comes out from that camera up and gets the big one-hit KO on that Heat Ran, but I think Heat Ran already really did its job, really just set fire to the field with that Inferno Overdrive. Porygon 2 now gets to set up Trick Room in this good position for this camera up. You know, I, I disagree with you. I think that was an overplay to try to stop the Trick Room. I think losing uh, Heat Ran just for all that damage in Porygon 2 that can easily just be recovered off, burning the Z-Move also. Um, and then you didn't actually stop the Trick Room. If you'd done that and stopped the Trick Room and then lost Heatran to Earth Power, it's worth it, but not like this. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't really much option right there either. I mean, could go for the Roar, but if Camera Up did what it did, I mean, you the, it would just be Yeah, I think you just have to allow the Trick Room to switch, maybe because the Trick Room comes up. Now you've got this burnt Kangaskhan in against Trick Room. At least Tapu Fini is here threatening four times super effective water moves against Camera Up, forcing it to switch. Tapu Bulu is going to hit the field, going to take any water attack from that Tapu Fini. Much better than that four times weak Camera Up here. It is also going to change the terrain, going to change it to the Grassy Surge and slowly heal back everything that is grounded. Porygon 2 going to switch out. Mimikyu hits the field. Going to try to take a fake out into that slot right now. Uh, it does still have its disguise intact as the fake out does land into that slot. Tapu Fini going to use this turn to set up a Calm Mind, but of course Tapu Blue is going to be threatening that Tapu Fini so much. Yeah, I mean, it, i got to expect that on the team this devoted to Trick Room, that Tapu Blue is going to be very slow, likely moving a Trick Room before this Tapu Fini. Um, and threatening the uh, one-hit KO on the other Tapu Fini. That fake out is burnt, can't be coming in against Tapu Bulu this turn. That burnt Kangaskhan isn't going to be doing much damage. Um, 
And then now with Grassy Train in over Misty Train, M Mimikyu is free to will with anything that does come in. Kangaskhan switches out. Aegis Slash going to go ahead and hit the field here. Going to take any attack from that Tapu Bulu way better. Uh, Mimikyu can threaten it with a potential ghost type attack, but at the same time, maybe comes in better to take a possible fairy type attack here. And it looks like it is going to be a Mimikyu Z here. Going to go for it. Let's snuggle forever here as Mimikyu is going to go ahead and try to snuggle something to its demise. I wonder what the target will be. I mean, I'm expecting it's that Tapu Fini. Um, it could have been Kangaskhan for a lot of damage. The Kangaskhan wasn't much of a threat there. Uh, but it's also odd to hit the Tapu Fini. So it is the Aegis Slash that used to be the Kangaskhan. Yep, and uh, you know, that Mimikyu is actually a very slow Mimikyu because, you know, naturally Mimikyu is actually a pretty fast Pokemon. It is actually underspeeding that Tapu Bulu, which kind of shows you how these Pokemon are trained or even how they are bred, as that does absolutely nothing to Aegis Slash in that shield form because of its sky high defense stat. Tapu Bulu using Wood Hammer here, hitting in that Tapu Fini Protect as Aegis Slash going to heal back just a little bit. Yeah, thanks to the, uh, Mike's own Grassy Train healing back, uh, you know, with how little that Let's Snuggle Forever did, a big chunk of that damage. Um, I would expect that even if that Tapu Bulu is completely devoted to Trick Room, this Aegis Slash is still going to be moving first in Trick Room, outspeeding and threatening a KO with uh, Flash Cannon if it has it, uh, unless this Tapu Bulu is instead very heavily trained in the special defense to be able to take it. Um, yeah, Tapu Bulu does have a higher physical defense stat, uh, but you can always train it in special defense in order to take uh, special attacks a little bit better. Maybe this Aegis Slash doesn't even have Flash Cannon as Porygon 2 gets a download boost right there. Tapu Fini gonna switch out, does not want to get KO'd just yet. It is gonna reset the terrain uh, later on when it comes back in to really reduce the amount of damage that that Tapu Bulu can do. Uh, Aegis Slash now gonna change into Blade Form, goes for a Shadow Ball, does not affect that Porygon 2, so great switch right there as Tapu Bulu goes for a Wood Hammer, gonna hit in that Kangaskhan, boosted by that guy, did so much damage against the KO. Wow, that's so much damage. One hit KO, and not quite a one hit KO, but barely any chip damage in that Kangaskhan doing so much damage. Uh, I think that Aegis Slash going for Shadow Ball does reveal it doesn't have Flash Cannon, otherwise you just gotta eliminate that Tapu Bulu as a threat. It's threatening so much damage here in Trick Room with that grassy terrain. Yeah. And that means that Tapu Bulu is still a little bit safer. That recoil means Shadow Ball is going to do a big chunk of the damage, but I don't think it's enough to KO. Tapu Fini comes right back in, going to go ahead and change that terrain again. Uh, you know, Kangaskhan Wishes came in on the Mystic terrain, but uh, the way the board position went, Tapu Bulu was just in so much more of a favorable spot. Uh, now down to the last two Pokemon over on Mark's side. Uh, Mike sitting pretty heavy right here. Trick Room is still up. Aegis Slash can still go for an attack, but I'm not sure if it has anything to be able to hit that Porygon too. if we've already seen Shadow Ball. Yeah, one option Aegis Slash might have to kill Tapu Bulu would be that Ghost Z, except that the Fire Z was already used for all this damage that's still on Porygon 2. And so I think this Tapu Bulu is going to be able to get an attack off. It just won't be Grassy Terrain boosted. Tapu Bulu protecting itself. Not going to want to take any attack from that Aegis Slash here as Tapu Fini follows suit. Just in case that the Tapu Bulu did go on the offensive and the Shadow Ball couldn't get the KO there as Porygon 2 over on Mike's side now goes for a Shadow Ball. So, uh, all right, that's a new move for Porygon 2 coming into this format as it does get the KO on Aegis Slash because it is in blade form and it has, like, you know, super low defense as the Twisted Dimensions return normal. Now, the speeds are back in order. Yeah, you know, I think that Shadow Ball is a great option to deal with something like that Aegis Slash and uh, really is the winner for Michael here. That Aegis Slash otherwise looked like it was in a decent position, you know, doesn't worry too much about what Tapu Bulu can do, but because that Shadow Ball's there, he's the KO, and then there's no way Tapu Fini can deal with Tapu Bulu yep, wins the, the game. The match was forfeited, uh, you know, Mark feels like he's ready to move on to game two, does not want to reveal any more information about that Tapu Fini. I don't think we actually saw it move, do anything at all, so, uh, you know, saving that Tapu Fini for a little bit later is actually a smart play. You want to preserve that information, don't let Mike know what set that Tapu Fini is. It did call mind at one point. Yeah, that's right, that's right. immediately to be scared off the field by that top of Bulu. Yeah. So it, now it's going to come down to how Mark can make those adjustments to try to, you know, combat Mike's hard trick room mode. Yeah. Uh, you got to not lose things so quickly. You know, the trick room actually I don't think was the problem. The trick room went up and not all that much damage came out during the trick room. It was all the damage, only the, really the wood hammer against Kangaskhan. But then he also lost T-Tran as the trick room went up and then lost Aegis Slash without the trick room just because the Shadow Ball was there in Porygon 2, and so I think he's got to be careful to not overcommit to stopping Trick Room. Maybe with all of his bulky Pokemon, be willing to play in and out of Trick Room and just be uh, careful and conservative with what he has. I think one way that the match could have gone completely differently is going back to that Roar. If that Roar had dragged out Tapu Bulu instead of that camera up, 
that would have been a lot better position for Mark because that top of Bulu would not be able to hit uh, that Heat Ran immediately. Maybe threaten it with a superpower, but Heat Ran could have, of course, just threaten that top of Bulu immediately. Unlike that camera up that you know could have survived really anything that that heat ring could throw at it and just threaten the one hit KO with that earth power. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes when you do roar things out, you just bring in a bigger problem. And the camera up came right out and then got a one hit KO on the very next turn. So like sometimes a risky thing to go for that roar, but especially when you don't actually prevent anything with it, since the mimic you did just will o wisp and burn that Kangaskhan. And that's one thing now that you know Mark has to keep in mind. Uh, top Top of Fini is going to come into play. Uh, you kind of want to position that terrain exactly right. So that Kangaskhan, Kangaskhan cannot get burned. You know, Parental Bond was such a threat in previous formats. Now, with that nerf between Generation uh, 6 and Generation 7, about how the second hit only does 30%, you gotta make sure that Kangaskhan can deal as much damage as possible. Yeah, I mean, taking that burn stack with that nerf is just not enough much damage output for Kangaskhan. Aegis Slash and Kangaskhan are the leads of choice for Mark here, trying to force a Game 3 as Porygon 2 and Karakasa are the leads for Mike Groshans. Of course, Karakasa does have that sturdy ability. It does have access to a lot of great moves in this in this new format. It actually has access to Liquidation. I, I just can't imagine that it's Shell Smash with this team compilation. You, you doesn't make any sense combined with all these heavy Trick Room Pokemon, so... I think it must be a, a new set uh, based around that, uh, or just you know, using it as a trick room attacker, having access to liquidation. Um, out here, it's really not threatening either his Pokemon too immediately, I don't think. There's not the heat train out there that he's maybe hoping to see it up against that would have been threatening the KO against. Uh, but Porygon 2 probably can set, set up this trick room other than getting faked out. Eventually, it will get the trick room up. Kangaskhan Mega Evolves here again. Not seeing any reason to wait, maybe keep on to that scrappy ability. Uh, gonna go straight into Mega Kangaskhan, get that parental bond, get that Joey out of the pouch. Kangaskhan now using fake out. It is gonna land into that Porygon too. Another option could have been to break that potential sturdy over on Karakasa as Aegislash gonna go for a substitute here as Karakasa revealing that it is gonna use knockoff. It is gonna hit that uh, shield form Aegislash. It is gonna fade the substitute. Uh, no item was knocked off because of the substitute being up as Porygon 2 flinches. Yeah, so not too much happens there. The fake out was burnt. I think the substitute is a smart play. If, if Karakasa starts start going after Kangaskhan or starts trying to set up, maybe if you're kind of unsure of what Karakasa is going to do, you can get a free substitute up. Instead, it goes after uh, Aegislash, and you basically pay 25% for the protect right there and keep Aegislash relatively healthy and... Uh, prevent Porygon 2 from Trick Room on that turn, except you didn't do any damage to Trick Room to Porygon 2, so I think it will just be able to Trick Room this turn. Maybe low kick plus Sacred Swords enough to get the KO. Uh, At that point, I think you go for the double edge on that Porygon 2. I'm not exactly sure how heavy Porygon 2 is and how much damage low kick's gonna do. It's not exactly something that we, we had planned for, or any player probably planned for. Uh, you know, Porygon 2 is a great Trick Room setter, but it's gaining in popularity. Kangaskhan goes for the double edge, gonna use that instead of the low kick. On that Karakasa, gonna bring it down to under, like, that's about 30% damage right there as Aegislash again continues to go for a substitute, not wanting to possibly uh, maybe activate the weakness, possible weakness policy on that Karakasa. As Porygon 2 does set up the Trick Room right there, uh, Karakasa does have a pretty high physical defense stat. Yeah, maybe could be enough to, to take not too much damage from these attacks coming out and the shadow ball might be better damage output especially if you're worried about that weakness policy um porygon 2 gets the trick room up relatively unscathed uh and we have seen that karakasta is slower than Aegislash. is going to be moving first in this trick room uh if that shadow ball and knockoff can come off that could be enough to ko Aegislash even through that substitute it's gonna be dependent on how mark has trained his Aegislash here is it gonna be slower than that karakasta uh, i don't uh, we've seen the substitute go up before the knockoff. So. Right, right. So I guess it comes down to is Aegislash going to be able to underspeed the Porygon 2? But I think it did show last time. Uh, Aegislash now has to use King's Shield. This uh, could be good. Could possibly drop Karakasa's attack stat if it hits into it. As Karakasa goes for a knockoff into that King's Shield, it is going to drop that attack sharply, or harshly, sorry. Uh, Two stages of decreased attack right there as the Shadow Ball lands into that slot as well. So a double up into that slot, but a very well-timed protect. 
Yes, smart or smart protect. A lot of players don't think to protect when that substitute up because you already feel safe, but that double target was coming and would have been huge against that Aegis Slash. Instead, drop Kirikasa's attack, waste the turn for Porygon 2, and get Tapu Fini in safely here where it's not too threatened by either of these Pokemon. Maybe that Thunderbolt from Porygon 2, but I really don't think, especially now at minus 2 attack, there's too much to worry about from that Kirikasa. Kirikasa using knockoff again. This might not even fade the substitute, and it doesn't. It does not fade wow, it at all, and here comes so the never-ending nightmare. The never-ending nightmare from that Aegis Slash. That is going to be massive damage done to that Karakasa. Getting that KO. Big threat removed from the field. Uh, it's KO'd now, so Karakasa didn't get any sort of weakness policy activation. So smart play right there from Mark to not trigger that and just be able to get the KO without you know having some really slow, tanky Pokemon over on the other side of the field being able to threaten and retaliate. Yeah, and so Karakasta goes down. Uh, so far, this Trick Room has only really gained a knockout on this Substitute. But I think Mark was smart to keep kind of forcing the issue. Substituted twice in the first three turns. But when Trick Room did go up, um, had the Substitute up, and was able to continue to play in Trick Room because of it. Yeah, and Tapu Fini gets off a free Call Mine right here. Going to try to boost its attacking and defensive stats against this Porygon too, so a very good position for Mark. Very great adjustments to I guess kind of just combat it in Trick Room. Except for this, yeah, you call mine again, right, as Tapu Bulu is definitely coming out. There's no reason to not bring in Tapu Bulu uh, in, with your Trick Room turns remaining as the Tapu Fini uh, call mines. We've seen that it doesn't, most likely doesn't have Flash Cannon based on its move selection. Uh, so Tapu Fini probably just going to be forced out of here immediately again because that Porygon 2 could just keep Shadow Ball and Tapu Bulu doesn't even have to think about attacking Aegis Slash. It can just go straight after Tapu Fini, hit whatever switches in very hard, unless it's that Heatran, and Shadow Ball can go after Aegis Slash. Yeah, and you know, this is one of the issues with uh, not having some set <laughs> Trick Room counters here. Kind of hard to deal with if your speed control is not up. It looks like Aegis Slash is going to switch out. Kangaskhan is going to hit the field, trying to take that Shadow Ball. But instead, Microshawn is going to try to get as much out of this Trick Room as possible. Switching in that camera right here as Tapu Fini goes for a Protect. Again, trying to stay out on the field as long as possible. And baiting that Wood Hammer into that Protect right there. So didn't really want to risk you know, sending in that Heeran or anything like that. Or maybe even trying to switch into that Kangaskhan slot. So uh, smart Protect right there as Kangaskhan gets coming. Provides a little bit more Fake Out support to try to stall out one more turn of Trick Room. Yeah, provides the fake-out support, uh, could fake out the Tapu Bulu to really extend the turns where Tapu Fini feels comfortable on the field. Uh, maybe you can even preserve the Calm Mind if that happens. The other option is, you know, if Eruption and Wood Hammer is what's coming out, Heatran would love to take those two attacks. doesn't mind that at all. So You have to time that right, though. I mean, Kangaskhan goes for a fake-out into that Tapu Bulu, opens up a chance for uh, Tapu Fini to go for a Water-type attack in that counter up slot. Of course, that could just be a possible protect right there. You'd be giving up Kangaskhan for that, though, so we'll have to see. Uh, Tapu Bulu actually switches out, not going to want to stay in, uh, take damage from that Kangaskhan. Porygon 2 is going to get a download boost, it is going to be an attack boost, as Cameron is Mega Evolving now. Uh, that's... I would expect to protect here, because that Cameron is heavily threatened by that Tapu Fini, and at the same time, Cameron can't really do that much damage out, but no protects coming out at all. Kangaskhan goes for a fake out in what was that Tapu Bulu slot. Karam is going to move first here, goes for an eruption. Uh, that is going to be a trade, possibly, if Tapu Fini goes for an attack. Kangaskhan gets KO'd easily. It is a critical hit on that Tapu Fini, which is big because it actually bypasses that Calm Mind boost as Tapu Fini actually just goes for a Moon Blast here, going to land into that Porygon 2 slot. So, kind of a gutsy play right there from Mike to keep that camera out, despite knowing that Tapu Fini over on the other side had a pretty free opportunity to go for Muddy Water. Yeah, maybe a gutsy play, maybe a willingness to trade Kangaskhan for a camera up and get something out of this Trick Room. And I think you see Mark on the other side, how much he wants that Tapu Bulu gone. He fakes it out, then attacks it, trying to get rid of it. If he can get rid of it, then that Calm Mind can be preserved on Tapu Fini. If he can't get rid of it, it can force Tapu Fini out. It instead forces Tapu Bulu out, but gives up Kangaskhan in the process without doing anything to that camera up. Yep, and now Mark trying to take his time to figure out what the best option is to come in. You don't want to allow Trick Room to be set up right now, as Porygon 2 is actually Mark's last Pokemon. No heat ran in the back, so adjustment right there as well. There is a download boost of an attack. Yeah, bringing that Porygon 2 so that he can reverse the Trick Room if he needs to, but uh, Heatran provides so many great resistances it would have also been really useful. But it did go down quickly without doing anything useful in the last game, so maybe this Porygon 2 being able to reverse Trick Room, keep this Tapu Fini on the field and threatening. 
And Top of Fini goes for a Moonblast here into that Porygon 2. Porygon 2 gets KO'd, so there's no Trick Room option no anymore. need to reverse it. Porygon 2 goes for the Ice Beam here, gonna hit into that camera up. Camera up is still gonna be able to go, goes for a Nature Power, oh boy. All right, that's a very cool tech right there. Gonna turn that's into awesome. Energy Ball and gets the KO on Top of Fini. That's awesome. Big play right there. Yeah, I mean, just gets the KO on that plus one special defense top of Vini. That is so much damage coming out. That sheer force boosting energy ball because it does have that chances drop special defense. Um, trades that Borygon 2 happily to get that uh, top of Vini off the field. Now what deals with camera up? Eruption will just come out. I mean, maybe you can't immediately go for it because you'll take some damage, but you can still go for heat waves, get lots of damage out, except there probably isn't room for heat wave then. You've got to have... Uh, Maybe no protect. We've seen earth power. We've seen nature power. We've, we've seen, seen eruption. eruption. It could be heat wave. Another fire move. It could be protect. Protect. There's a lot of moves that this camera really wants to have, uh, but that is really cool tech right there. Each slash gonna protect itself. Not gonna want to get KO'd by possible uh, flamethrower or a heat wave or eruption or anything like that. As Top of Bulu using this turn to go for a bulk up here, trying to boost up its stats. Yeah, ice beam coming out. Oh, give me too much damage against this camera. No, not much damage at all, and camera reveals that it does not actually carry protect. Gonna go for a flamethrower right there, so Mark's probably thinking back to himself, you know, all those times that he could have gone for an attack expecting a camera protect, it does not have protect. It doesn't have it. I couldn't, wasn't even possible. It wasn't even a smart prediction. It was just the only thing available. That Tapu Bulu boosting up so that in the uh, chance that camera up isn't able to close this game on itself, you instead have a boosted Tapu Bulu that even against Aegis Slash should be able to it up. I really think Mike's gonna win this right here. Yeah, Top of Bulu goes for the superpower here into that Porygon 2, but Porygon 2 is so bulky. Hangs on Top of Bulu, drops to neutral attack and defense. Thanks to that superpower for or thanks to it from earlier. As it looks like uh Porygon 2 just went for an attack. I went to into Ice Beam against Aegislash. Aegislash. Yeah. As Camera up goes for a flamethrower, so that was kind of an interesting play right there. I can't see what that ice beam was possibly for. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if, if Mark has just decided there's no way. No way back, and rather than click the forfeit button, that's what he's decided to do, because it just, that camera up has too much health left. Now that it has revealed Flamethrower, I don't know where the damage comes from to deal with that. Maybe if that Ghost Team Z was still available, you could start looking at the damage. But then even if you managed to get enough damage to knock out that camera up, Top of Bulu is still there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Top of Bulu, it's not in Grassy Train, can still go for very powerful uh, Wood Hammers. Here comes Super Power onto that Porygon 2, gets a KO right there. And that should do it. It looks like Michael Chris is actually going to be piloting Vivian, Caracosta, and Canro into the top cut here as Aegis Slash goes for one last move. Sort of its final gambit. It is going to be a Shadow Ball here. A critical land. hit KO on the camera up still makes this game competitive. Yep, and it does not get the K critical hit. Does get a special defense drop right there, but Cameron goes for the flamethrower, and that does it. Michael Shans just punches his ticket to the top eight. Yeah, really well played. Revealing that nature power energy ball at exactly the right moment. Having that no protect camera up, that is gutsy. That is a trick room and I want to win before it's over kind of style of play where you don't even need protect. You're just trying to have what? the right move at every situation, including that nature power energy ball when it's a top of Fini that's got to go. Why waste time protecting in trick room when you can't protect in trick room? That's right. You don't want to burn a turn That is the protecting. strategy. Don't protect in trick room. I can't waste turns. Uh, you know, protecting in Trick Room, I just don't need Trick Room. I, I just don't need Protect then. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, I think, played that pretty well. Uh, matchup, I don't think, was very good for him. Diffi and then he kept getting surprised by little things. Um, that's a hard match to play when you see multiple Pokemon that you don't see very often. And then within those Pokemon, even something that came up, which you don't see very often, then you get surprised with something on that camera. It's yeah, like I mean, definitely, definitely thought that that Tapu Fini was a bit safe. Even I thought that that Tapu Fini was actually a bit safe. I thought that was going to close the game. Yeah, exactly. That Tapu Fini was there. That was going to be the game winner. There was no way, going to be no way for Mike to get it off the field. Yeah, but then you know this cool tech. Uh, you know, Tapu Bula is on the field for a reason. Uh, and it shows how powerful Camera Up is. That was a plus one special defense Tapu Fini, more than fifty percent health. With an energy ball, it was boosted it was by Grassy, grassy train, train though. and sheer force. Yep, but that's still so much damage. Anyways, uh, that's a. Big win right there for Mike Rashans to finally make it to the top cut. I'm not exactly sure if he's actually made it to the top cut before, but congratulations to Mike Rashans. Of course, Mark Elson does have a chance to make it to the top cut, but he's going to have to rely on tiebreaker, and you never really want to do that. But that was still a very well-played set. You know, this is also a very cool team using a lot of pieces from older teams and bringing it back. Yeah, it definitely feels like a team we would have seen in 2015, but with something like Porygon 2 from 2017. And instead of uh, Cresselia. Yeah, instead of Cresselia. Actually, yeah, in Tapu Fini instead of like a Thunderous or Amoongus, right? Yeah. 
well, I guess Age of Slash and Heat Ran are slightly redundant, but we're going back to 2015 uh, team tropes, but let's not get into that again. Guys, Vivian is in top cut. Yeah. That's I can't awesome. wait to see it. Karakasa is in top cut. We never saw it in that match. There was no reason to really bring Vivian to start powdering her Tarzan on the other side. There was the Heat Ran, but that wasn't uh, a big problem. Well, I mean, actually... Vivian is a complete counter to Heat Ran. Well, yeah, complete counter yeah. to Heat Ran, but yeah. only if you feel like Heat Ran something you really need a complete counter to. And I feel like having the camera up, having the Karakasta, you had plenty for it. Len, can you believe that Turtle Moth is back? <laughs> yeah, but just a different moth. <laughs> it's 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 actually a butterfly. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, oh. congratulations to Mike Rashans. Uh, commiserations to Mark Elson. But again, you s Mark still has a chance to make it to the top to, to the top cut, depending on how the resistance goes, right? Maybe I haven't done the math for this particular tournament. Varies from tournament to tournament, but I'm sure he's hoping. Well, anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a quick, quick break, but when we come back, a post-tournament day show? Yeah, some sort? we're going to recap the day. We'll have the top eight. We'll kind of go over the bracket and tell you what to expect tomorrow when we start bright and early, uh, 8.30 tomorrow, 8.30 yeah. Pacific time. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> 